A lot of our patients at Mayo Clinic and a lot of uh, patients across the United States actually because of immunocompromise or because of our age, less than 12 months of age, depend on what we call herd immunity. Herd immunity is when enough of us are immune uh, that we create a cocoon or a halo around those people who are not immune, either because of disease, refusal to get the vaccine, or because of age, too young to get the vaccine. This halo or cocoon is quite effective, but for a measles uh, herd immunity, we really need a good 90, maybe 95% of us to be immune. Now that's tall order. Uh, in fact, that, that really uh, behooves all of us to get the vaccine and understand that perhaps up to 5% of us will not respond even after two doses. I think we know enough uh, at this point that the uh, contagion began at Disneyland uh, in California. Uh, what we suspect but have not seen confirmed yet is probably the lead case, the index case, the person who brought into Disneyland most likely was an international traveler. Um, Measles is a naturally occurring disease in the United States has been eliminated since 1980. All of these outbreaks we've had since, including the 677 cases we had in 2014, uh, just a, uh, an outrageous number in this day and age of vaccination, uh, were all brought from the outside. We, I keep reminding ourselves, these vaccine preventable diseases may not be common, but they're just a plane ride away. Oh, it can be a horrific disease. I, if it, um, uh, up to 40% of people during a measles outbreak can be so sick that they're hospitalized and they're getting uh, intravenous fluids for support. They might require oxygen. Um, we don't have a, a drug we can treat measles with directly, uh, but we can make them comfortable and sustain their organ systems and get them through the illness. But some are left with permanent harm. You can develop an encephalopathy uh, and some will re, uh, get secondary bacterial infections, such as those who get pneumonia or uh, middle ear infections. Um, we, we say on average about one out of 300 or one out of 400 die from measles, uh, but a good uh, a uh, fourth to a third end up hospitalized. And, uh, and uh, then you've got to count all of the people who have to be careful about the potential for exposure. For example, we have two cases in Arizona. One of the complications is about a thousand people have been exposed and need to be quarantined or monitored closely uh, until they can be proven free of disease. That's quite a hardship on people who need to work and people who need to finish school. Um, so there's a lot of complications of this, uh, but I would say this is no easy disease. In fact, I recall that the first children that I learned to put an IV in uh, when I was uh, training in medical school were suffering from measles. Uh, they were lay prostrate in their bed, unable to eat or drink, and were dependent on intravenous fluids. Um, this is a horrific illness. Right now, we're really asking people with a fever and rash to get that evaluated, and that means they need to contact their clinician, let them know that they are worried about measles. Uh, many offices, such as ours, have special procedures for how we bring somebody who might be that contagious into the office. Uh, we have special rooms, we have masks available, we often will have the patients take a back stairway or go up uh, a back elevator. But they need to be evaluated because we aren't going to uh, determine whether or not you have measles without seeing you. We have blood tests, or, or and, um, but uh, right now we're actually using swabs with PCR techniques working with the state of Minnesota, just as many clinicians can work across the country with their state Department of Health to uh, do a rapid assessment for measles. Meanwhile, quarantine that person or isolate that person until we know the result of the test. Now, in addition to the fever and rash, there can be a cough, a runny nose, and runny eyes. Um, and there can be telltale diagnostic white spots inside the mouth. But uh, as a person who's cared for children with measles, those are pretty tricky. And I think I'd leave it up to professionals to tell if you have it or not. Meanwhile, for everyone else, um, make sure you know your measles vaccine status or your measles immunity. Um, you can count on, if you were born uh, 1956 or earlier, you can count on it that you've already had the measles and you're immune. Um, with the exception of healthcare workers where we do a, a little better job checking, we just wanna see evidence by the lab or have you received those two measles, vac uh, measles containing vaccines. 
for everyone else, uh, if you're, um, uh, outside of uh, students and uh, those uh, uh, who are traveling to areas where there are um, outbreaks, uh, one vaccine is good enough, um, or laboratory evidence of the disease or of immunity. Uh, for the people who are traveling, to areas like California, Arizona, other states affected by these outbreaks, or internationally to areas that are affected, we need evidence of two vaccines received. Measles vaccine, MMR, does not cause autism. We have proven it. We have proven it in a way that we have uh, so aggressively studied it around the world and repeatedly. We have very few things that we know so surely that measles vaccine does not cause autism. If that is your fear, you need to put it away and get your child vaccinated and you need to get vaccinated.